Hello there, my Facebook friends. It is Candy here for my Tuesday at 2 live video today, and it is July the 10th. I have started to um, put the little date at the top of these videos. Somebody had suggested that to me. Uh, I think it was Carlos who's going to be on here today. Hopefully, she's finding us. So uh, let me know if you're here, and I'm going to jump right in to what I've got to share with you today because I've got quite a bit to share. Hello, Darlene. I'm so glad you're here. And Diane, you are here today live with us. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us on this nice, hot July day. Um, very grateful for the rains that we've had over the last several days. And uh, it was actually cool enough to, this morning that it, uh, it really, going outside to walk, felt quite good this morning, which is not typical in the middle of July. So I am grateful. Okay, anybody else coming on here live? We are just two minutes in, but I was actually on time today, which helps the whole process. And um, I've got uh, some projects to share with you. And what I will start with right off the bat is to share the projects that we did last week um, and um, the drawing that I did. So these are the projects that we did last week. And uh, this is, both of these are featuring the Garden, Ex Garden Impressions uh, designer paper. And in my little um, diaper fold um, treat container, I've got a package of these little um, embellishments. And uh, if you shared my video from last week somewhere on Facebook, then you got entered into my drawing. And uh, there were quite a few shares, and I'm very grateful for all of you that shared. The winner of the drawing is Melissa. So, Melissa Thomas, I will be popping these into the mail for you today. And I am so glad that, um, that you're going to get these. I think you're going to have fun with these. Okay, well, let me move on. And Crystal, I'm so glad you're here. Um, the first thing I'm going to share with you today is actually a class that I'm doing on Thursday called Delightfully Detailed Home Decor Class. I'm going to share it with you on this part of the, of the uh, video because once I turn the camera downward and start stamping, I have a smaller space. And this is a large uh, home decor. This is a 12 by 12 piece that we are making. And I'm going to try to get where the glass is not reflecting and you can see all of that scrummy color on there. This is the delightfully detailed paper. And so in this class, which I actually have two spots available still. So in this class, you get this 12 by 12 frame with the glass. And this is a flat frame. This is not a, um, this is not a shadow box frame. This is actually a scrapbook page frame. So Michaels actually has uh, frames like this that are designed for scrapbook pages. So it's a, a true 12 by 12. And because this has a lot of detail, um, I opted to go with a really slender frame um, so that what's inside here can really pop. So in this class, you get the 12 by 12 frame, you get a package, uh, and there's two sheets of this. This is the new Dazzling, um, glimmer paper and it really is very holographic is, is what the the shine reminds me of really um, gorgeous gorgeous shine in it and um, you get a couple of spritzers now mine have um, ink in them and alcohol hey Bobby I'm so glad you joined us um, so you get a couple of these spritzers that uh, you can use to recreate projects like this and then um, you get the delightfully detailed paper, which uh, you actually get four pieces like this, this laser cut. And um, that means that you can create more of these if you so desire, or you can cut the paper up and make other projects. And then we're making a couple of note cards with some of the other patterns in the same package of paper. So here's uh, the little note cards we're doing. And uh, these are the same colors I used in this piece here. 
and that is the Coastal Cabana. These are This is a returning color, and then the Gorgeous Grape, which is a new color. Thank you, uh, Darlene. Sparkle Glimmer Paper. I'm calling it the wrong thing again. And then this is one of our returning end colors from last year, the... Um, Ay, ay, ay. Very burst. So these are the two note cards we're going to make. And then, um, then we're going to do two little tags. And this is all using different elements from the Delightfully Detailed Designer Series paper, which is a laser cut paper, something we've never done before. And uh, let me just highlight one more thing before I move on. And that is that I created this little focal piece here with cardstock and ribbon. You could put anything here. If you wanted to put words across here, you could either put vinyl words, you could put an image that you created on a silhouette machine. You could actually put, um, I think silk flowers would look really pretty here. So there's a lot of different things you could do here. This is just an option. I'm going to cut these for the people who come to class, but you don't have to use this little flower if you don't want. If you want something a little bit more flash, um, that is totally permissible, and I realize I'm jumping out of the camera angle for you. Okay, I need to get on with projects because I've got a lot to show you. Um, we are going to do what's called a one-sheet wonder in celebration of the Designer Series paper special this month, and I had told you previously that each week this month that I'm sharing Tuesday at 2, I'm going to feature some kind of project with designer series paper. Right now and through the end of the month, there's 10 different designer series papers that are on special. And when you buy any three of those, pay well, actually, you choose four of those papers, you only pay for three. So it's buy three and get one free on select designer papers. And there's 10 different ones. Now, one of the papers that um, you can get in the special is this one here and this is called nature's poem it's a really beautiful paper i've shown this with to y'all before here on here on tuesday at two because i really love these kind of woodland patterns but um they're they're just outstandingly gorgeous so this is one of the papers you can get in the buy three get one free and i'm going to show you uh one of the projects that we had done, I'm gonna show you my fix. <laughs> so one of the projects that we had done in this um, with Club last night was this little box and this card that's made out of a single sheet of 12 by 12 Nature's Poem paper. It's a trifold card, so it opens like so. Well, if you notice, well, you may not know, be able to see it from here, but we had a little bit of a coffee mishap. This was one of the samples last night. We had a little coffee mishap. So what I'm going to do, and uh, and I know you guys have this happen to you from time to time. This is actually just stuck down, so I'm going to pull it right off of here um, because there's nothing wrong with the focal piece. It's just the, um, the paper underneath that got the coffee on it. And so I am just going to pull that right off. There's my focal piece. And I'm going to take another piece of paper just like this, but I'm going to flip it around to the other side so that I'm going to use this side of the same paper instead. Hi, Cheryl. I'm so glad you joined us. And um, originally, uh, this was just stuck down. I am going to take the opportunity to put a few dimensionals on here. And um, like I said, I'm going to flip this camera in just a minute and start actual stamping with you. But I did want to show you, um, hey, Melissa, I'm so glad you're here with us. Um, I want to show you how you can take and fix. I mean, coffee mishaps, they happen to all of us. I do really endeavor to uh, have a uh, what I have uh, facetiously called a no open container policy at my events and when I'm stamping as well. Having said that, Darlene and I were working yesterday in my studio and I was the guilty person here. And that was that I had uh, my morning coffee I had not finished and I had up here in the studio without a lid on it. Hi, Nancy, I'm glad you're here. And we had a coffee mishap yesterday too. So uh, no surprise that we have one during club as well. So now I've taken my same 
card and I've just flipped the paper. Now I'm gonna have to put an insight here. But let me show you how this, the, uh, the other option to do this, uh, my original option I should say, because we actually have the um, envelope here to match and then this cute little box to match. So you really have this beautiful little set of projects here, all made from a single sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper. This is the one that I had originally done, and this uses the Share What You Love designer series paper that is just really gorgeous. This is one of the papers that's not in the special, so I did wanna point that out to you, but this project has this little box with it and this is a thicker paper um, and there's an envelope to match somewhere around here but anyway that is uh, that is lost but um, one of the things that I think would be really fun with this and we were talking about it last night during club is that when you open this this is a perfect place to put photos so I wouldn't want to put anything I wouldn't want to put like bulky embellishments inside because you're going to close it up. And I'd like, I, I have a passion for having cards that mail with a single stamp. So because of that, I typically don't put a lot of hard embellishments on my cards that I plan to mail. Um, but here, I think this really lends itself to putting a little photo here. So whether it's school photos of your kids or grandkids, a photo of your, you know, your puppy dogs, your fur babies, whatever it is, this would really lend itself to that. So uh, without further ado, I am going to clear my space here a little bit and show you how to make this 12 by 12 one sheet wonder. Let me get my space cleared so you would not believe how much stuff I have on my workspace here. Um, not because I'm making a mess, but because I have a lot to show you today. So um, full disclosure there on the mess, but actually it's a mess with a purpose. So let me get it all lined up here for you so that it makes sense once I flip the camera. Okay. Oh. Uh, and Cheryl has already made some of these, and I'm so glad that she has, because I've actually made this with my club members this month and also with my team members. Hi, Leslie. I'm so glad you've joined us. Okay, prepare for the camera flip. It is happening now. Let's see, are we there? Hey, we are there. Okay, so what I'm starting with is just to show you that this is, this is kind of my template that I made. So this is a 12 by 12 uh, piece of, you know, this is the heavy card that comes in, well, it actually went this way. This is the heavy card that comes in your designer paper. And so I just took that and broke it down to kind of show you that if you take and cut that at five and a half, then you have this piece here and you're gonna score that at four and a quarter and eight and a half, and that is what is going to fold up to create your card front. So that is what is gonna be folded up to create either this card here or this card here. Now, when you've done that part, you wanna take the rest of your 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper. And this little piece here, you're gonna see is cut off because this, I cut this at nine and a half because it's six and a half wide, that's what was left. And I'm taking this little scrap and I actually used it to put right here. So I lined my envelope front or flap, I should say. Yeah, you have to be very careful when you score the card part. That is correct. And I'll tell you why. That's a really good point, Cheryl, and I'll tell you why. You see how this piece here has a directional pattern? This one does not. So you can score this in any direction and it doesn't matter. But this particular piece has an up and down pattern. And so you wanna make sure that you're scoring it for this kind of a, um, what do you call it, um, portrait and landscape. Um, I can't think of the word. Anyway, so that it, it 
it's up and down. You wouldn't want it to be scored so that your flowers were upside down. They would look silly. You also don't want it scored where this piece is coming over here. You really want this shorter piece on the inside. Having said that, I did some wrong and we've made them work. But ideally, you would, sh you would score them um, actually as shown here at four and a quarter and eight and a half. And if you just make sure that your card is the way that you want it when you're scoring, then you're gonna be in good shape. Okay, I'm gonna show you the, I'm gonna list the dimensions on here when I'm finished. So let me show you a couple of things, uh, kind of the way it works, and then I will, uh, hey Blanca, I'm glad you're here. Orientation, thank you for the word that I was, that was just totally eluding me. Uh, so then that leaves us with this piece that's six and a half by nine and a half. And um, I turned it around this way because you're going to score this at two inches, four inches, six inches, and eight inches. This is actually called a two, four, six, eight box. And then you're going to flip it and then just score two inches right down here. Now, let me show you what that's going to do. So that's kind of a template, so you can see um, a little bit before I um, before I actually start working with the projects. So this is the paper that I I'm going to use right now, and this is from the uh, the same um, Share What You Love designer series paper here. So this is just one of the other patterns, and you can see that this is the way my paper started out and I have cut and scored already because I'm gonna show you the stamping part and I couldn't do it all in under 30 minutes. Okay, so you can choose whichever side you want on the front. I actually decided to do the, um, the really bright, cheery side on the front. And uh, again, this is, this Share What You Love paper is one of the specialty papers, so it's thicker and, um, in order to accommodate all of that pearliness. So when my recipient opens this card, all this cheery front, it's gonna have all this pearly beauty on the inside. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to do a little bit of stamping. This is actually for the inside. And that is so that I will be able to write on the inside of my card. Now you could just put a piece of white cardstock, but I really feel like that if you put that little bit of frame on there, that it actually is much more pleasing to the eye. It looks a lot more finished. So what I'm gonna do here, let me put my little mat underneath here. This is my little paper piercing mat that I'm putting underneath there. And I'm just going to grab this Rich Razzleberry um, ink pad. And this is still the old style pad that I'm using. And I'm going to take this little tiny flowers and just ink that up and do one in the corner like so and another one without inking up. And you see how pretty that looks? It just kind of finishes it off. In fact, I could even do one more up here and just keep going. And you see how I just get more um, shades of the Rich Razzleberry. Now, I want to adhere these together. And that way, the inside of my card is totally done. Very quick and easy. And again, I like to put, kind of do a little bit of burnishing on the back. And that ensures that my... Um, adhesive really stays, uh, adheres to the two different pieces of paper so that it holds them together. That's the whole point of that. So now I'm going to pop that on the inside and that is done. So now I'm just going to decorate the front and that's going to be done. So you can see it's very quick and easy. And honestly, if you take like several pieces of 12 by 12 and, and cut and score all at once, then you're ready to go with your other uh, pieces. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna also just grab this here, and I am going to add this piece of 
scrap of my designer paper, and that way absolutely nothing is discarded. Absolutely nothing goes to waste. And of course, I probably did not bring a pair of scissors over here, which I did not. But you can see how you would just cut that to fit around your envelope flap, okay? And then I am going to do my simple stamping for the front. So here is, um, here's my back and here's the front. And I think that is actually not the right size, but I guess we're gonna make it work. See how that's a little bit too small? I somehow grabbed the wrong piece of cardstock. However, we're gonna make it work. So let's see what we can do here. Let's get our background first. And this is Mint Macaron. This is the new, uh, this is one of our returning colors and it's also one of the new pads. So you just open it up like a compact and slide back. So what I'm gonna do is take the, um, there's a stamp in this Share What You Love stamp set that looks like a watercolor background. And this, let me just, sh I'm not sure if I showed you, this is the stamp set I'm using and this coordinates actually with the paper. So some of these same flowers are in the paper that I'm showing you today. And I'm going to ink this up. And this is actually pretty dark. And so I'm gonna stamp it off first. I'm gonna kinda come over here and grab my piece of scrap paper and I'm going to just stamp it off like so and that way that's just too dark for what I'm wanting to use and now I'm going to come right here and stamp again and now I'm going to have a very light wash of the mint macaron so I'm going to close this up because I am notorious for putting the wrong stamp in the wrong ink pad. So I do try to close those up when I'm finished with them. Now I'm going to put my words here and these this is a beautiful beautiful saying and it says it's a beautiful day. Now I'm going to go with another one of our returning colors. This is Blackberry Bliss and again one of our new ink pads and I'm just going to tap tap tap. It doesn't take a lot. And I'm gonna put this right down in the lower right corner. You remember with photopolymer, you always wanna hold it for a couple of seconds before you lift up. And I'm a little crooked, but that's gonna just work. Let me go ahead and stamp my flowers before I, I wanna show you something else, but I think I will, I'm gonna get ahead of myself if I'm not careful. This is gonna be a little tight squeeze because this paper is a little bit too small for this. But there's the outline of my flowers and my saying. Now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna fill in these flowers with this little, another watercolor wash. And this time I'm gonna use the Rich Razzleberry. This is actually a counterpart to Blackberry Bliss. Look how deep and dark that is, very inky and dark. So now I'm gonna come with the Rich Razzleberry and you see how much lighter that is? If I were to do that with the um, Blackberry Bliss, you wouldn't even be able to see what was underneath there. It would just be so dark. And so I'm stamping that off over there and then doing it again there. So now I've got my stamping done. Before I put this together and show you how that works, let me leave that open. I wanna show you something because I was uh, talking to a couple of my ladies that were here last night and they were asking the difference between the Blackberry Bliss and the Rich Razzleberry and I think this is a really good way to demonstrate that. So what I did was I took this, this is the smallest of the watercolor wash stamps in the Share What You Love stamp set. Again, that's this one here. Hi, Mary, I'm so glad you've joined us. So you have a couple of these little watercolor wash um, uh, little splashes of color. So I'm gonna ink this up with my Blackberry Bliss ink and I'm gonna show you what happens here because if I stamp it here, it's really dark. 
really dark, very inky, almost looks black. It is blackberry, but I'm gonna keep going. And as I keep going, I'm gonna get lighter shades of the same color. And with Blackberry Bliss, I mean, you can keep going for a while. And really this one is too pale, but you can see the different shades that you get. Now I'm going to clear my stamp. And this is the new Simply Chamois that Stampin' Up! that we have. I think this is, I think it's a $6 chamois, maybe it's seven. I like this because it's nice and thick. And um, this is just damp and it fits perfectly into a clear mount stamp case. One of the nice things about this is this is not airtight, which means your chamois will not start molding and, and stinking and all those kinds of things that we don't want. And then I am going to take the Rich Razzleberry and do a side by side so that you can see the difference. You see how Rich Razzleberry is a lighter counterpart to Blackberry Bliss. So that is the way that um, those colors work, which I think is a help. Okay, I gotta move quickly because I gotta still show you how to do the box and I haven't even put my card together yet. Aye, aye, aye. This is what happens when I get to gabbing too much. And that's what you can also do when you get ink on your finger and you don't have anything else handy is just put it on the chamois. Okay, so here's my beautiful day and my card is here and I'm ready to just pop that on there and again this was a little bit smaller than I intended but that's really not a problem because I'm going to pop it on here at an angle with a little bit of snail and the time has flown today I'm just gonna do a little angling like so and then put a few Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. And you know, this is one of my little pet peeves um, and I keep preaching this to ensure that people get the message. You gotta put dimensionals in the center of a large piece like this. Otherwise, it's gonna, it's gonna sag in the middle and that's just not a look that is attractive. And so, you know, dimensional, stamp and dimensionals are very inexpensive. Don't be stingy with them. Use them liberally and your projects will positively sing with beauty. So now I'm going to pop that right there. And now I'm ready. My card is done. Hey, Michelle, I'm so glad you are here joining us as well. Now, there are a couple of little finishing touches if I can find them. Ah, uh, yes. I'm going to use a couple of these little self-adhesive, uh, these are not rhinestones, these are aye, 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 sequins, and I'm just going to scatter a few of them like so, just to give a little bit of accent there. And my original, I have some twine. But what I'm going to do really quick is show you how to do this 2468 box because I need you to see how to do that. So here is my 2468 and I'm going to go ahead and, and um, what do you call it, um, crease all of my score lines really well so that my box will have nice sharp creases. Um, sometimes you want a soft box, but this particular box, you want to have all those nice sharp creases. Now I have to get some scissors for you. Sorry about that. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to cut up to this next horizontal score line, what I often call the intersection. So you're gonna cut all of these right up to that score line. And you're gonna cut this one out. This is the one that's that's shorter, it's smaller. So it's more of a, it's more of a skinny rectangle and you don't need that one. So we're gonna cut that one out. Now, the measurements for the DSP on the box are, this is, uh, nine and a half by six and a half. Um, here's my little um, guy here, and I'll probably just take a picture of this and post it, uh, as well as the measurements, I'll, I'll write them out. 
Um, because my card is like this, I think just for fun, I'm going to do the box in the opposite direction. So what I will do is I will put some adhesive right here on this short. This is the one where I cut this little piece out. So I am going to just put adhesive right along that and then fold my box in like so. And you want to make sure that adhesive is really stuck. And then that creates the beginnings of my box. Okay. Now I'm going to take these little guys. And what I like to do is just splay them out like so. It's not sticking very sticking out very, very well. And you're going to put adhesive on three. If you get it on four, it doesn't hurt. But it's not necessary to do that fourth one. So now I'm gonna take the ones that have the adhesive and I'm gonna fold them in and there's one and there's two and there's three and there's four. That's the one without the adhesive. And then I'm just going to press the bottom with my bone folder and that is to make sure that all that adhesive is really gonna hold nicely. And then I'm just gonna squeeze the top of my box. Make sure everything is squeeze, squeezing nicely here. And then I'm going to take a library clip. You could do a lot of different things here, but I just opted to do a library clip. Uh, these are super cute, super fun, and it makes almost like a little mini melt box. So this would be perfect to put some lipstick in, some chapstick, some nail polish, um, lottery tickets if you're if you like doing if you like giving that kind of thing to people movie tickets anything that's kind of small this also be great for putting some chocolate in um, even some kind of a little cookie um, so that is my projects for you for today a little set of projects that you can use for all sorts of things now this is supposed to have a little decoration on the front and I ran out of time to get that stamped for you but this is what that looks like so that everything ties together and looks like it belongs together but it's nice to have some variation not have everything too matchy matchy so as we finish today I am right at just a little past 30 minutes and um, as we finish today I wanted to share with you that if you would like to share um, my projects today if you would like to share my video today you will go into the drawing and uh, for this week and the drawing for this week you will get these two projects in the mail now this will be flat because it needs to be able to mail and then you will also get in the mail you will get a package of these embellishments these little guys right here these little adhesive back sequence. So that is your prize for this week for sharing uh, my video. And um, Melissa is getting the ones from last week. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. Let me uh, flip back around again. Um, the time just absolutely flew. Um, thank you, Cheryl, you've already shared and I appreciate that so much. Um, the time absolutely flew today. Um, I realized I was sharing uh, my other class and um, sharing the paper special. Uh, I had other things out here I was going to share with you, but I'm really trying to stick to my 30 minutes. So I guess I need to either talk faster or share less. But I really appreciate you tuning in today. I'm having a lot of fun um, just connecting with y'all. Um, Diane, I'm so glad you're you're here with us, and Leslie, and Michelle, and Crystal, and Darlene, and uh, I think I already said Cheryl once, uh, and Bobby. Bobby's here as well, so that's what I'm remembering, because, you know, as I'm filming, your comments come up in the feed, but other than that, I can't see anything else. So, once again, it's Candy Rattrace at Sweet Stam from SweetStamper.com, and I am so glad to be here. Tuesdays at 2, put them on your calendar. Uh, I'll be with you here again next Tuesday, and then I'll have one week off because I'll be in Alaska on the Stampin' Up! Incentive trip. But I will share more about that next week. 
and uh, I will come home from that trip with lots of extra cool things to share with you. So it was One Sheet Wonder today with Designer Series Paper. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you so much and God bless. I'll see you next week. Take care.